Hello all, Erica aka ECR Horses 1901 here, and I have a confession to make. I can't count. <laughs> I said in the first video that I would be talking about mm, 20 models each time, and for some reason, I don't know if anyone noticed, I ended the second video after talking about only 13. That's on me. I somehow totally miscounted when I was looking at my list of models. So, this video is going to be extra long to make up for it, because not only will I be covering the seven models that should have been in the second week video, but I'm also going to include all of this week's 20. So without further ado, here we go. Number one, Clydesdale Full, introduced in 1969, sculpted by Chris Hess. This poor boy is unfortunate. He has a lot of that older Briar charm, but damn is he rough. He has been given some nice colors over the years, such as this black Pinto from 1999 through 2001, and a chestnut Pinto for the 2017 Vintage Club. But no matter what color you put on this mold, it can't correct the inherent flaws. I'm afraid Clydesdale Foal is gonna be another F-tier. Clydesdale Mare, introduced in 1969, sculpted by Chris Hess. Given my feelings about the Clydesdale Foal, you may be surprised that those feelings don't cross over to the Clydesdale Mare. And yes, I am biased because I have the Blanketed Mare, from the 1971 through 1990 gift set, who recently placed well in both a collectability class and even came in first, shocker, in a seven horse UK draft class. So love you sweet potato, <laughs> she's up there on the shelf, I'm not gonna go drag her down. But I, I do think she's not bad for a Clydesdale mold. Her body isn't overly rotund, like we see on some of the other draft molds, and although we do have some face wonkiness on some of the models, it's not nearly as egregious as what we've seen on previous older molds. This has been used for one of one Briarfest models eight times, and my personal favorite is the Glossy Dapple Bay from 2015. B tier. Clydesdale Stallion, introduced in 1958, sculpted by Chris Hess. I was gifted the Highland Clydesdale model that you see on the screen back in the early 90s, and I thought until a few months ago that this horse was supposed to be a mare. I mean, especially compared to modern models. This horse, that was a little weird to say, but if you collect models, you know what I'm talking about. But this horse has literally no genitals, or even a hint of genitals. So, yeah. Um, like, honestly, until I got into logging my collection and into showing, it wasn't until I looked up this model on Identify Your Briar that I saw that this is supposed to be a stallion, so yeah. <laughs> anyway, this mold is okay, although I do think it borders on too chunky. I feel the need though, before we escape from here, to point out the two flocked versions, both of which were flocked aftermarket by Riegsecker, sorry, not sure how to pronounce that, a manufacturer of miniature horse-drawn vehicles and handcrafted oak household furniture. Aside from this bay, there is also this gray version, both of which somehow managed to be both cursed and adorable. Clydesdale Stallion, C tier. Connemar Mare, introduced in 2014, sculpted by Sarah Minkowitz. Oh boy. <laughs> This is another horse what are you doing mold. Especially for a Connemara? I don't know, but this is not what I picture when I think of that breed. 
Anyway, this was a 2014 Premier Club model, Dancing Heart. I'm not crazy about this color, so it doesn't even win points for me there. The Spice Drop web specials, Clearware with silver or gold dappled filigree from 2021 are kind of interesting, but overall this mold does not do it for me. D tier. Desitato, aka semi raring Criollo Stallion, introduced in 2012, sculpted by Christina Lucas Francis. One of my favorite molds, absolutely. I'm pretty sure I love every version of this mold, to the point where if I were going to conga anything, this would be a big contender. I already have Picasso, as I follow the group on Facebook, yes still, that tracks the herd he was part of, so I actually bought this model during the years I wasn't quote unquote collecting briars. And I love, love, love Lightning Ridge from the, or sorry, the 2019 limited edition that, as you can see, is this super interesting glossy red, green, gold mixture that is super unique. S tier for sure. Donkey, introduced in 1958, sculpted by Chris Hess. Donkey, it sure is. <laughs> Unfortunately, pretty unexciting, and another where the proportions strike me as being kind of off. With better options out there, like Brighty, this has no choice but to be an F tier. El Pastor, introduced in 1974, sculpted by Chris Hess. Here we have a Pasifino, and he's fine. This is another portrait model of the Pasofino Foundation Sire, El Pastor. Once more, I think my favorite model on this mold was a Briarfest Diorama Contest Prize. Shocker, I know, <laughs> from 2017, with a really nice, dark, dappled Palomino. I wouldn't go out of my way, except for maybe this one, for any of these models, though. At times his eye looks strangely possessed or off-putting. Like, why is this pink? <laughs> and it looks like it's that in every picture, at least of this particular model. And anyway, there are better Pasofino models on the way. El Pastor, D tier. Esprit, introduced in 2010, sculpted by Kathleen Moody. Definitely a fancy boy. Originally sculpted for the 2010 World Equestrian Games, which were hosted at the Kentucky Horse Park in Lexington, Kentucky that year. I like the sense of motion with this horse. And again, I sound like a broken record sometimes, but the very wide variety of colors and patterns that we see, including a number of decos, such as this silver filigree alpine, which was a 2010 web special. There had been five one of one Briarfest live auctions using this mold most recently in 2022. And again, I quote, a shaded dark red bay Tobiano Pinto, which sold for $8,500. I actually have a Pecos in my collection, and I love that even though he is not technically glossy, he has a pearlescence to him, and um, you can't really see it too well on this picture here, but on my actual model, the dappling is done really well. And I definitely have my eye on a few of the flashier versions of this mold. A tier. Ethereal, aka Conquistador, introduced in 2006, sculpted by Kathleen Moody. So this was originally a connoisseur model, which was essentially a limited edition only for Just About Horses subscribers, and these were limited to 350 pieces. This particular one, as you can see, was a really striking Palomino Pinto with 
dappling. Over time, this has become another mold that has had some really interesting and unusual colors, such as this Grello Pinto, which was a regular run from 2013 through 2015, and which I have. I also love the eyes on this mold, which, no matter what coloring you're looking at, convey a lot of personality. Along with, again, the overall movement and detail. A tier, but more of an A+. Family Arabian Foal, introduced in 1960, sculpted by Chris Hess. This little guy was created when Briar lost the rights to produce the Proud Arabian Foal, which is very similar. Although this is another early model that is confirmationally not spectacular, you can't tell me. <laughs> His face doesn't have a certain charm to it. <laughs> and just saying, if anyone has a wood grain version of him lying around, please feel free to send him my way. Thank you. C tier. Family Arabian Mare, introduced in 1961, sculpted by Chris Hess. This is another older model that's not great, but holds a certain nostalgia for many people. She was gone for a long gap from 1997 until 2015, when along with a family Arabian foal, this mole was revived as a limited edition set for the Sweet Home Chicago event called Addison and Clark, and again, cute but probably best if you're not concerned with showing and just want a nice collection to look at. C tier. Family Arabian Stallion, introduced in 1959, sculpted by Chris Hess from a design by Maureen Love. Yeah, so the story goes that this was based off a Hagen Renneker model called Amir, which if you look up, you can definitely see the similarities. In a lot of ways, a mirror is a bit better than what we have with the family Arabian Stallion, but what can you do? Anyway, this is another mold that's had a million incarnations over time, up to a truly beautiful, if questionably named, 2020 model called Quarantini, <laughs> of which there were 20 made, all of whom were raffled off to ticket holders for the Seattle Soiree event, which had to be cancelled because, well, 2020 happened. Anyway, <laughs> Family Arabian Stallion, C tier. Fell Pony, introduced in 2015, sculpted by Kathleen Moody. There's nothing really wrong with this mold, or any of its models, it's just not for me. C tier. Fighting Stallion, introduced in 1961, sculpted by Chris Hess. If you collect briars, and I assume you do, and that's why you're here, I'm willing to guess you have at least one, probably more, of these guys in your collection. Because face it, is there a more iconic mold? Maybe, but this has to be up there. He has had endless awesome color combinations and decos, and has been a one-of-one one Briarfest live auction model 24 times. 24! <laughs> he has also appeared as a lamp back in the late 1960s, and a nightlight in the early to mid-1960s. There is truly something for everyone with this mold. Basically, if you can't find a version of the Fighting Stallion that you like, you might have to question why you're here. S tier. Five Gator, introduced in 1962, sculpted by Chris Hess. He's a pretty okay model in most respects. Not having looked at any of these models closely in person though, I sure hope his muzzle is not as gargantuan as it appears in a lot of pictures. I don't know, I don't have too much to say. I think the most interesting model on this mold is Gala, a 2009 Briarfest 10 special, which is this very cool mottled blue, black, green. Not bad, just meh. C tier. Fjord, aka Henry, Norwegian Fjord, introduced in 1996, sculpted by Kitty Cantrell. I remember liking this model when he was new, 
but looking at him nowadays, he's another that looks a bit face heavy, if that's even a thing. I guess I'm making it a thing now. There are certainly better Fjord models, at least one that I can think of offhand, so I'm actually surprised that this mold was used as recently as 2020 for a limited web special. D tier. Flash, introduced in 2004, sculpted by Susan Carlton Sifton. This was a portrait model of a Morgan Gelding, the U.S. Pony Club's 50th anniversary horse. And you could have fooled me, because I don't think I would have guessed this was supposed to be a Morgan. It's a decent generic horse mold, and has been used for a variety of breeds. I will be on the lookout for Little Texas a horse from 2011 through 2012, one of the Horses in American History collection, because I am interested in Theodore Roosevelt, and this is a model of his horse during his time in Cuba. Aside from him, there's a number of pretty good models that use this mold. Solid B tier. Foundation Stallion, introduced in 1977, sculpted by Chris Hess. Another mold that feels classic and ubiquitous, though it's not a particular favorite of mine. This mold has also been used for a variety of breeds, from an Arabian to an Azteca to a Lusitano. And the thing is, I'm not really sure he's more than okay for any of these breeds. I do like the variety of Lakota ponies that were created in 1992, but otherwise, I'm really shrugging my shoulders at this guy. D tier. We are nearly at the end. <laughs> Frisian, introduced in 1992, sculpted by Jeannie Mellon Herrick. This was one I got when he was new, and he is okay. Some of the non Frisian models have been interesting, such as the 1999 Holiday Horse, Jack Frost. And I'm not usually a fantasy model fan, but I like the glossy rose lavender unicorn, which was a one-of-one -one Briarfest live auction horse from 2004, which sold for just over $1,000. C tier. And that brings us to the final horse in this extra long video, and that is the Frisian Sport Horse, aka Vermeer Walking Frisian. Introduced in 2020, sculpted by Lynn A. Frawley. I think this is the most recent mold that we have seen so far from just 2020. And I'm not gonna lie, I've never actually taken a good look, until now, at any of the models on this mold. But for the most part, I like what I see. As in, I might be putting a matte Surratt unusual because I normally prefer the glossy, but I think I actually prefer the matte in this case. Weird. Um, but he may show up on my to search for list. Definite B tier. And we are now caught up. Hooray! <laughs> so let's check out the tier list totals. We now have 6 in S tier, 10 in A tier, 8 in B tier, 16 in C tier, 9 in D tier, and just 4 in F tier. I actually managed to get the Arabian Mare to finally go away, I think. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and you know the deal. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video, where we will go back to the intended list of just 20 horses. Bye for now.